Uh, hi guys, Wilhelm here. Today we're going to take a look at game 8 in the match between Firuja and Ivanchuk. The score of the match, as of now, is 4-3 for Firuja. And they have to play 3 more games. So let's jump right into it. Firuja in this game has white. And he opens with d4, but as you'll see in a second, we will transpose into an e4 opening. So after e6, knight f3, c5, Alreza plays e4. And so now we're transposed into a Sicilian defense. After cd4, knight d4, and a6. And now we have c4, the Maroxi bind. And the point of this move is to overprotect the d5 square and to cause problems for black. Because it's often said in the Sicilian that if black can play d5, he'll be very well. So here black, white tries to, with everything he has, prevent this d5 push. Okay, we have a knight f6, knight c3, queen to c7, developing moves. And now I will go quickly through the moves because the players played 20 moves of theory. And so I will just go quickly through the moves. And both players castle. White brings his rook to the c file, lining it up with the opponent's queen. We have nine, knight develops, b4, taking some space on the queen side. Black brings his rook into the game. White brings his knight back. And now queen b8, getting out of this alignment with the white rook. So we have queen d2, developing the queen, connecting the rooks, bishop to d8, rook f to d1, bringing the rook to line up with the queen to put pressure on the d6 pawn, bishop to c7, defending the pawn, bishop to f4, attacking the pawn, runs once more, knight to e5, blocking this attack of the bishop, bishop takes e5, d takes e5, and now um, c5 by white. And after b5 and a4, uh, we can see what happens in the position. So white has an extra pawn on the queen side, a pawn majority, and so he will look to try to create a passed pawn. And where is black's extra pawn on the king side? Well, it's here, it's a doubled e pawn, and so black will have to try to create. Uh, a passed pawn on a king side, but in the end game, white will have a better game. Also, the e pawn right now is blockading this very strong bishop. Well, now it's not very strong. And this light square bishop is also right now biting into granite, basically into this pawn chain, so it's pretty powerless for now. But black's plan is going to be to try to play f5 to trade or to undouble his own pawns, and then to unleash the potential, the latent potential, of his bishops. So that's the plan for black, and now Ivanchuk plays rook f to d8 to attack the queen, put the rook on the open file. And as of move 20, we have a completely new position. So they play 20 moves of theory, which is impressive, but uh, considering it's the Sicilian, I mean, it's, it's, it happened before. Okay, so white gets his queen out of the way, protects the pawn, overprotects the pawn. We have bishop to c6. This move also blocks the pawn from moving forward immediately and defends the b5 pawn, which will become a weakness in the future. We have ab5, ab5, g3, and now h5. And black really has to make something happen on the king side because. On the queen side, I mean, he has a pawn less and all his pieces are a little bit stuck for now. So he has to really generate some counterplay on the king side. So white decides to trade the rooks. All the rooks are traded. And now h4. Um, black wants to white to take and that would weaken white's position and white's king. But... Uh, of course, white doesn't take. He plays bishop to e2. And he wants to pile up on this 
b5 pawn because this b5 pawn can only be defended by the queen and the bishop. And so we have hg3, hg3, knight h5 attacking this pawn on g3, king to g2 defending it, bishop to d8, black wants to reroute this bishop to the king's side, and now queen to d3. And then we can see that in this position, um, the b5 pawn is attacked three times and can only be defended twice. And so it's going to be lost. And so white will get two connected passed pawns on the queen side. So what can black do on the king side? Well, Ivanchuk plays bishop to e7. But maybe that was too slow of an approach. A better approach was maybe either bishop g5 or bishop h4. And bishop h4 is actually a very cool move. Uh, you can't take this pawn because of obvious knight to f4. And I mean, you can't push it either because of the same issue. And this pawn will be lost and maybe then f5 can happen and that's how black would build his counterplay. But okay, Ivancho goes bishop to e7, a little bit too slow in my opinion and according to the engine as well. And now we have knight a5 attacking this bishop. Bishop goes back. Knight takes b5. Now white has an extra pawn actually, but in practice he has two extra pawns because he has two connected passed pawns, whereas one of black's pawns is double and blockading the queen's access to the king's side. If we would take this pawn away, well, suddenly this queen would have great attacking chances on the g3 pawn. But hey, it didn't happen. So we have g6, solidifying the position a little bit. c6, pushing the passed pawn, because passed pawns must be pushed. And after knight f6, queen to c4, protecting the passed pawn again. King to g7, and c7 by Alireza. Ivanchuk just resigned because you cannot stop this pawn from promoting. Let's say you play, sorry, let's say you play queen to c8, well, only knight to a7, and the queen has to get out of the way. And after takes, takes. Um, I mean, Alireza is a pretty good player. I'm pretty sure he can win with uh, being a queen up. And so Ivanchuk just resigned uh, after playing 20 moves of theory in the Sicilian. Uh, Ivanchuk took a plan that was maybe a little bit too slow, didn't play f5, and went for this slow h5, h4 idea, and in the end, Alireza just slaughtered him on, on the queen side. And so, quite an impressive victory. Um, so now the match score is 5-3 to three for Alireza, and if he gets to 6, or even 5.5, he wins the match, because it's a best of 10. And so Ivanchuk has to win the next two games in order to force an Armageddon game. We'll see what will happen in the next video. Yeah, definitely exciting things ahead. Yeah, so that's the game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And as usual, like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what kind of videos you would like to see in the future. Also, a small announcement. A uh, few of you can probably know that I am also a musician, I'm a violist, I play the viola. And uh, I will start soon a new video series on composers and their chess games. For example, Prokofiev was a great chess player and a great composer and a great musician. And so I will show some of his games where he plays against Capablanca and Emmanuel Lasker and I think it'll be very, very fun. Maybe I'll try to incorporate some music into the video as well to, to connect two things that I really like. So the music and the chess. So yeah, I mean, I hope you enjoyed this video and as usual, have an excellent rest of your day. Thank you very much.